What's up, guys? HJ here, and I'm starting a new series called Questions with HJ. So this question comes from Mac. He has a pair of Air Jordan 1s that he customized. He wore them hiking, and he now has a crack in the paint. And since he has the crack, he's wondering if maybe he didn't prep it properly. So he actually has a few other questions that might be helpful for you when you are customizing. Okay, so to answer his questions, um, first thing to prep your shoe, leather deglazer and preparer. Here's a deglazer from Fivings, and then naturally your acetone. So the acetone is the cheapest method. However, it can be a little bit more abrasive. I personally do prefer the leather deglazer and preparer, but it's totally up to you. I know some people will even use nail polish, just make sure that it has acetone. So his questions were, how many times do you use acetone, two to three passes? How many layers of paint should he lay down? And how many layers of finisher should he use? And he also had a question about, should he use an airbrush instead? So here are the shoes after he went on a hike. So you can see there is a little bit of a crack, a white crack that you can see. And honestly, I thought it would be way worse from hiking, but you could just see that little crack right there. And then his last question was, how should he fix this issue? And to know if you did your shoes properly, naturally, there's a little shine on your shoes. So the factory finish, you want to remove the shine. That's the whole reason why we want to prep the shoes. So you want to remove the shine and you'll notice when you use it, I always like to use uh, like cotton flat pads. Um, it leaves less cotton residue. So what I always do is I'll rub it, you know, real good, maybe two to three times. Sometimes people say that it's helpful if you see the gray underlying part of it. So like they completely remove the paint. Personally, I don't do that um, because I don't think that to paint whatever you're painting on, if it's just a solid color, you might be fine. But if you're actually painting a design on it, it could leave some ridges. So personally, I don't do that, but to each his own. So you'll want to make sure that this will start feeling rubbery. So naturally it feels very smooth. Once it feels sort of rubbery, a little bit tacky, then you know that you've done your job with the acetone um, and just removing that factory finish. So a word of caution, he went on a hike with his shoes. I do not recommend ever going on a hike. It's always good to be able to see how your shoes hold up. I mean, you wanna do scratch tests, different things like that. Personally, I wouldn't recommend going on a hike with your shoes ever. If it's for you personally, if you customize the shoes or for a client, you don't want your client playing basketball, going on a hike, running, doing anything strenuous because these are a work of art. So you wanna make sure that they do stay in good condition, but he did do a good job because you do want to test out your own shoes. So as an artist, you definitely want to make sure that your work is up to par. So don't recommend hiking, but it's good that he can now see what he can improve on. So personally, this is what I would do. I would dye whatever part using a leather dye. So leather dye and suede dye are two different things. Leather shoes, get the leather dye. There is, um, there's probably a few more brands than just this, but these two are what I prefer, Angelus and Fibings. So you'll want to dye the area that you'll be painting. This isn't a necessary step, and I think a lot of people do not do this, but it helps to create more durable customs by using a dye. So after you dye your shoes, you can then go and use your paint. So he had black. You can use Angel's black, you can use Jacquard black, you can use whatever black you want. Um, and then what I personally do is I will hand paint the majority, make sure that you do dye the threading so you can use your water, your paint, or your water and too soft, then make sure to heat set it and wear a mask. So you'll paint, you can hand paint this and it really depends on the number of layers. So I find that three to five layers works best and I do prefer to airbrush it just cause it will look a lot smoother if you airbrush your customs. Make sure thin layers and to also let it dry in between. So 
you do a layer, you use your heat gun or your hair dryer, let it dry, and then, you know, repeat that process at least three to five. You don't want to do like 10 layers because that can also cause it to crack. And obviously you don't want to do like two layers because it's probably not going to be enough. Um, and then one of his last questions was the finisher. So what type of finisher do you use? So I like LK. There's also scratch resistant sealer. This is from Rally Restorations. This was like when he first started out. So it lasts a long time because I don't even have a super cool label. And there's also Angelus matte finisher. So I do recommend using all of these with an airbrush. I don't hand paint it. You can hand paint it, but I don't recommend it. Scratch resistant sealer is more for the midsole to my understanding. Um, but LK and Angelus matte finisher can be for your shoes. And I'm sure you can also use this. Make sure that this is a little bit thicker. So if you do use it, I would probably thin it a tad. Again, these are my own opinions and maybe you find something that works better as your finisher, but definitely I usually will spray my finisher at least two to three times. And LK is kind of cool because they have different finishers, you know, factory finish. Um, Angelus also has a few different ones. However, their matte finish isn't as matte as the, uh, the LK finisher. So keep that in mind. LK finisher matte. So you have all your finishers that you can use to make sure that the shoes are then sealed. And then the last thing he said was, since he had the crack, how do you fix that crack there? So what I would personally do is I would go back with my acetone and you're pretty much just going to have to remove it, unfortunately, um, because if you just paint over it, there'll still be that crack there. So I personally would go in with the acetone, with the deglazer, wipe off that area, and then he could dye it, but chances are it's going to be really difficult to go back in the process. So I personally use the acetone remove as much as you can, and then with an airbrush, go back in and then just cover up that area again, and then use, you know, your factory finisher, whatever finisher you have just to seal that in. And then I probably wouldn't recommend going hiking, but it's good to test out your own customs. So I hope that was helpful and do comment below what you'd like to see next. And if there's anything that you disagree with, I'd like to hear what you would recommend instead. So thanks for watching guys and good luck. Thanks for sticking around with questions with HJ. If you have questions as a customizer or just as a client, feel free to ask them at hjartistry.com. Thanks guys. Take care.